So a lot of games have a fast travel option. So you open up a map, you click on the location, and then that location loads. So that's the functionality that I wanted to demonstrate in this video. So since we don't have a full game, we're just going to have to create a couple placeholder levels first and then get into the actual travel. So we're going to do a new level. So what we're going to do is we're going to first create an empty object. And we're going to uh, use a text mesh. And basically this is just so we can differentiate between the levels since there's no graphics or anything. So we're just going to drop that character size to 0.15. This is level one. And then we go up to file, save scene as. I'm currently in this folder here. And we'll call this level one. Now, what you can do is if you've created a level and you need to basically repeat that functionality but you need it to be its own level you can just go to file save scene as and save it all over again so we're just going to call it level two so any functionality in that level is going to be saved in this case it's only one object but you get the idea so we just need to change this so it says level two save scene save scene as Level three and change this so it says level three and again save the scene. And I'm just gonna drag and drop these. I saved them in the wrong location, which does not matter. Just drag and drop them right into the map. Okay, so now we have three levels. So level one says this is level one. Level 2 says this is level 2. Level 3 says this is level 3. So if you're not familiar with this, this is the way that Unity really breaks up a game. It breaks it down to what's called scenes, but honestly, a scene is essentially a level. In fact, the code to load a scene isn't load scene, it's load level. So even though they call it a scene, they really kind of tip their hand by saying, well, you know, to load it, you actually use a code that says load level. So uh, a scene would be, if you want to think of an old school platformer, it would be, you know, a level in a platformer, a uh, side-scrolling shooter, it's its own level. Sometimes maybe you see like on a side-scrolling shooter, your character flies off the edge and then a boss appears. So it probably switched levels there, that kind of thing. So, um, so really it's very useful to 2D games. With open world games, um, it's doable. Uh, but probably the way you'd go about it would be very different. So let's now do one more save. We'll call this save scene as, make sure we go to the right location, and we'll call this map. We'll delete the game object because that was for the other scenes take our map image, drag and drop, and drop it right in there. So now, save it one more time, we now have four scenes. We've got our map scene that we're in, we've got level one, level two, level three. So now this is where uh, comes together and we have to link these levels together. There's different ways to do it. What I'm gonna do is you can create an object that does not have a sprite, so effectively it's invisible, but it does have a collider box because it's not the actual image that's causing the collision. It's the collider box, which you do not show to the player. It's invisible. So, um, so technically it's not going to be the map itself that has the collisions. It's actually going to be these spriteless objects that are going to be placed on top of it. So we'll just go to game object, create empty, add component, physics 2D, box collider. You probably can see this green box showed up. 
So we'll just put that over here and we'll call this go to L1 because that's what it functionally does. We can copy, paste, move it somewhere else. And we can call this go to L2. And we'll copy and paste one more time since we have three levels. Call it go to L3. And we'll put it over here. Now this one, uh, the the image beneath it is much different in size. So you can just click on Edit Collider. And you see these four little dots appear. You can just stretch it out to match the size of uh, of the image beneath it. Okay, so L1 is uh, go to L1 is there. Go to L2 is there. Go to L3 is there. So there's two ways you can do this. You can either add a single script to all three and uh, check for uh, a ch uh, if it's been clicked or what you can do is you can create um, an individual script for each and every one so you'd actually have three separate scripts. Uh, the main pro that I can see is having one script is you have less scripts to edit so if you make a major change partway through the game you don't have to go back and edit 20, 30, 40 scripts you just have to edit that one. So that's the approach we're going to take. Uh, so I'm going to highlight them. I'm also going to set is trigger. We need the trigger to work. And then we do add component, new script, and we will call this fast underscore travel because that's what it does. Create an add. Double click on that to open it up. Okay. So Outside of start, outside of update, we're going to do a new subroutine. So void on mouse down. So what this says is if the mouse has been clicked down on the object that this script is attached to, then do whatever, whatever, whatever in here. Now this one script is attached to all three objects. So that means we're going to have to put in a few if statements to say, well, if the name of, of the object is go to L1, then load level 1. If, go to, if the name of the object is go to level two, uh, L2, then load level 2. So that's the one benefit of making three different scripts. You wouldn't have to do that. Since it, each script would only be attached to one object, then you don't have to do the check. You could just say, if the mouse is on this object, load this. So again, purely designed a preference what you want to do. So if game object dot name, so that is the name of the game object the script is attached to is equal to go to and got to be careful. I called it uh, and it needs quotes too by the way. I called it go to got to be careful of that actually now that I think about it because go to is a legacy command. I think it's probably still usable. I did see it try to auto populate. Probably isn't an issue in this case because it's a name, but you do have to be careful about using uh you know protected words like that or reserved words I shouldn't say protected reserved words like that. So the game object that you've clicked on is go to level one, then application dot load level. Notice it says load level, not load scene. And the name of it is, I believe it's just level one. Let's go check. So level one, lowercase. And the semicolon at the end. Whoops, where'd that come from? Now it's just copy and paste. So you copy this whole thing, you paste it, you just change go to L2 is the name of the object, and it loads level 2. And the last one, go to L3, and it loads level 3. So, quick recap. This script is attached to all three objects, so 
you need to let the script know which object you're looking for. So like I said, if you if you have three separate scripts, then all you need is the one command uh, that says load level, and it's either level one, two, or three. You don't need the ifs. Okay, and let's run it now. So uh, level one was down here. We're going to click on it, and it doesn't work. See how you got this error message down here? And it's actually a pretty good error message because it tells you that it's not been added to the build. So let's go up to File, and we'll go to Build Settings. This is where you determine uh, what's, you know, do you want, what platform do you want it on? Do you want it on iOS? Do you want it PC, Mac? Do you want it on a BlackBerry, Windows Store? Okay, so we're just going to leave it as Windows. Now, what you have to do is you have to add scenes, okay? So to add the scene, you click on Add Current. So we're in the map. Close that. Save our scene. Go to Level 1. Build Settings. Add Current. Close that. Level 2. Build Settings. Add Current. And if this seems tedious, it's because you would really do this as you go along. You wouldn't really queue it up all at once like this. Add current. And now we'll run it again. So let's go back to map. Run it. We click on this. And there you go. This is level one. Click on this one. This is level two. This is level three. So keep in mind, this isn't just a text line that's appearing. This has actually loaded a whole new scene, as I demonstrated at the beginning, that each one of these is actually its own scene. So you could have backgrounds, playable characters, whatever. Uh, I just did the single text to make it easy to distinguish. So uh, it's that easy. So that's fast travel on a map. Um, so that should about do it. If anyone has any questions or want to see an elaboration, uh, just let me know.